All right, guys, so the lesson that I am getting ready to teach you is a real simple, fundamental um, chemistry skill, and this is called calculating molar mass. You need molar mass for a variety of things um, in chemistry. If you're converting from gram to mole, maybe if you're working with empirical molecular formulas, um, limiting reactant problems, there's a whole host of problems where you need to use this skill. It's not hard. Um, but it's very important. So this is called calculating molar mass. Now, we already know that we can look at the periodic table and um, we can find the molar mass for any element simply by looking at the mass. For example, aluminum is 26.98 grams per mole. That means one mole of aluminum atoms has a mass of 26.98. The molar mass of carbon is 12.01 grams per mole. So if you have one mole of carbon atoms, that should have a mass of 12.01 grams. So we refer to this as molar mass, and the unit for molar mass is gram per mole. So that's the number that we're going to be working with um, today from the periodic table. So what you're going to need is access to a periodic table so you can find the masses as needed. Now, again, we're going to start real simply. Let's just say that I were to ask you, what is the molar mass for carbon? Your answer would be 12.01 grams per mole, and the abbreviation for mole is MOL. Just um, for simplicity, we're going to round most things to two places past the decimal. There are some exceptions where we will just go one place past um, the decimal. Not a real big deal with what we're doing today. It kind of depends on what kind of class you're taking and who is teaching it. So um, now let's say that you didn't just have carbon. Let's say you needed the molar mass for carbon dioxide. Now the difference here is that carbon is an element, but carbon dioxide is a molecule. And what that means is you have more than one element that has come together to make something larger. Molecule, um, it could be a formula unit, um, ionic compound, something like that. In this case, it's, it's covalently bonded and it's a molecule. In this case, you have to take into consideration that you have one carbon and you have two oxygens involved. So we're really going to break this down simply. As you move on in chemistry and you advance to harder problems, a lot of these you're just going to know because you do them all the time. You'll be able to do them in your head. You might be able to just to punch them in the calculator real quickly. So really what we're doing today is going to be just a very small part of a larger problem, problem later. Today, though, we're making it the problem. So for carbon dioxide, we're going to do an atom inventory. We're going to list everything present in the molecule. We have carbon and we have oxygen. And we have one carbon. I know that because I have an understood subscript of one here, and I have two oxygens. So you know how many you have based on the subscript to the lower right. Now what we want to do is we want to look up the molar masses of each of these atoms on the periodic table. So when you look at carbon, that is um, right here, carbon has a molar mass of 12.01 grams per mole. And remember the molar mass is the larger of the two numbers that are in that little box on the periodic table. So 12.01 grams per mole. Oxygen has a molar mass of 16.0 grams per mole. This is one of those elements where it is acceptable and uh, universally accepted to round to one place past the decimal for most people, especially beginner's chemistry. So now we're going to tally those up. If you have one carbon that has a molar mass of 12.01 grams per mole, that's a total mass of 12.01 grams per mole. Oxygen, if you have two of those, and each of those has a mass of 16 grams per mole, that's a total of 32 grams per mole. Now, if you want to know the molar mass of the entire molecule, all you have to do is add those two numbers together, and that is going to give you 44.01 grams per mole. Once you have this answer, you have solved for the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Now let's look at another example. 
I'm going to scoot this up a little bit. Now let's look at what happens when parentheses are involved. For example, let's look at aluminum sulfate, Al2SO4. Um, also simple, we just have to know how to handle the parentheses. So first thing, let's take an atom inventory. We have aluminum, we have sulfur, and you'll notice even though we know sulfate's a polyatomic ion, we're breaking that up into two atoms, and we have oxygen. Now let's count up how many of each. So because we have a subscript of two here, that means we have two aluminums total in this molecule. Now when we get to sulfur, we notice that sulfur is in parentheses and outside of the parentheses we have a three. We are going to multiply that three by the understood one here. So three times one means we have a total of three sulfurs. Likewise, three times four means we have a total of 12 oxygens. So um, what you just learned here was you multiply across the parentheses, easy peasy. Now we're gonna look up our molar masses and we know that the molar mass of aluminum is 26.98 grams per mole. We know that the molar mass of sulfur, and sulfur's over here with the nonmetals, is going to be 32.07 grams per mole. And the molar mass of oxygen, we all know, is 16.0 grams per mole. So now we're gonna multiply all these together start totaling these things up. So 26.98 times 2 is going to be 53.96. Now we all know this is grams per mole, but this is kind of just where I'm doing a little bit of scratch work, so I'm just going to have numbers here, but technically do know that's grams per mole. Then we have 32.07 times three, which is 96.21. And then 16 times 12, which is 192.0. Now we know all of these are gram per mole. And if we add them together, we're gonna to get the total mass of aluminum sulfate. So 192 plus 96.21 plus 53.96 equals 342.17 grams per mole, and that is the molar mass of aluminum sulfate. So that is how you calculate molar mass for a chemical formula, molecule, compound, however you're referring to it, a combination of atoms, this is how you find molar mass.